Here's our first video for rational expressions. We're going to start by just looking at a numerical fraction. We're looking at 12 thirtieths. And this is a fraction that we would be able to simplify. And when we're looking at simplifying this fraction, we're looking at doing it in a very particular way. We're looking at first the prime factors of each of these numbers, 12 and 30. And starting with 12, I'm going to make this factor tree. And I will go for all the prime factors. So the 3 is a prime number. The 4, we can break down that further into 2 and 2. So we've got 2, 2, 3 as the prime factors of 12. We'll do the same thing with 30. Breaking down 30, we'll get to prime factors of 2, 3, and 5. And I'm going to rewrite this fraction, 12 thirtieths, as the prime factor. So my numerator, I'm going to write 2 times 2 times 3. And in the denominator for 30, we're writing 2 times 3 times 5. Now that the numerator and denominator are written in factored form, we can cancel factors that we find in both the numerator and denominator, because basically that is a fraction that equals 1. So the 2 on top with 2 on the bottom, we can cancel those factors. And the 3's, we can cancel those factors. There's just a 2 from the numerator, a 5 from the denominator, and we've got our simplified fraction, 2 fifths. Now, this might not be the way that you would prefer to simplify a fraction like 12 thirtieths. Maybe more often you would choose to, what can I divide top and bottom by? I can divide them both by 6, and that will lead us to the same answer, 2 fifths. We're just looking at a different way of simplifying. But this first way is going to be a lot more useful when we're working with rational expressions, because rational expressions are fractions where numerator or the denominator is a polynomial. So here's an example of a rational expression. How would we simplify this rational expression? And the way we would simplify it is a method that is very similar to what we've done here, where we look for factors, and then we cancel the factors to simplify a fraction. So this one, well, we'll, we'll get to this one. Looking at this example, another rational expression, the numerator and denominator each is a monomial, one term. And remember, our terms are separated by adds and subtracts, so we don't have any. Definitely, there's just one term in the numerator, one term in the denominator. And the approach that we'll take is similar to that first example. We want to break numerator and denominator up into the prime factors so that we can see what we can cancel. For this first example, just bear with me while I go for all the prime factors. And it's going to take a little bit of writing, but it's a way that I feel very confident that I'm arriving at the correct answer. So it starts with our coefficients, 24 and 64. And we want to find the prime factors of those two numbers. Gone for the trees. And 24 is leading us to 3 twos and 1 3. And 64 is leading us to 6 twos as the prime factors. So I'm going to rewrite a fraction, and I have 24 written in factored form, and the 6 twos and 64. For the variables, x to the third, I've written x times x times x. And there's the y squared, y times y. You can see in the denominator, there's our x squared. And there's y to the fifth. So this example, I'm doing a lot of writing, but I can see exactly everything that I can cancel. And now I get to have fun canceling as much as possible. Just remember, when you do canceling, it needs to be the same factor, but one in the numerator and one in the denominator. So there's a set of twos, another set of twos, and a third set of twos. These guys we're going to have to leave alone, because there are no other twos left in the numerator to cancel with these twos. Uh, there's a 3 left over in the numerator. We did similar canceling with x's. There's a set of x's and another set of x's, and a couple sets of y's. With these factors that are left over, those are what we're putting into our answer. So the numerator, we're seeing a 3 and an x, so 3 times x, 3x in the numerator. And for the denominator, 2 times 2 times 2. Careful there, that's 8. And y times y times y, y to the third power. And just cautious that our 3x, those were the leftovers from the numerator, so they're in the numerator of our answer. And 8y to the third is in the denominator. There's our simplified rational expression. Here's our next example. The numerator is 6x squared times quantity x plus 3 times quantity x minus 4. 
in the denominator 18x times quantity x minus 4. Now I want you to notice that the numerator, we would consider that numerator to be just one term. Now definitely inside this set of parentheses we have two terms. This is a binomial factor and another binomial factor. But looking at our entire numerator, we don't have any of these factors separated by adds and subtracts. They're all pieces that are being multiplied together and the ones in parentheses we're treating them like they're unbreakable bricks. We can't get at the x and the negative 4 individually. We have to see this as the single factor x minus 4 and here's another one x plus 3 and we'll emphasize this idea a little bit more as we go along but I'm gonna take the approach that we were using with the previ previous example about how to simplify let's take the 6 break that up into prime factors 2 times 3 the x squared is x times x these binomial factors as I said they're unbreakable they're in parentheses totally contained so they are additional factors x plus 3 and x minus 4 they are considered to be prime factors just like 2 and 3 and x and y and z are all individual factors we cannot break them up any further now we have these binomial factors. x plus 3 is another factor, and x minus 4 is our last factor up in the numerator. In the denominator, 18, we can find prime factors 2 times 3 times 3. There's the x, and there's our binomial factor x minus 4. We're going to start the canceling. We can cancel the set of 2's, there's a set of 3's, a set of x's, and these binomial factors they are available for canceling also except when they're in parentheses it's all or nothing so I don't want to look at this X with this X I need to look at these binomial factors as the brick the unbreakable brick that they are where I could cancel an entire X minus 4 with this X minus 4 definitely we want to do that but I don't want to start trying to cancel just bits and pieces from inside a set of parentheses so that's all the canceling that we can do and finding our leftover factors from the numerator we have x and this binomial factor x plus 3 they will go together in the numerator of our answer in the denominator just this one factor 3 and there's our final answer if you're thinking about should I distribute that x and make it x squared plus 3x if you did that it definitely would not be wrong that's usually though an extra step that's just not necessary and as we go through the other operations regarding rational expressions we'll talk about when we should multiply out and when we should keep things in factored form for now our rule of thumb is when we get to the end we're going to keep these simplified fractions in fact so avoid any multiplying or distributing at the end of the problem just leave it in factored form Before moving on to another example, let's take just a different approach with the same problem. Instead of writing everything out as prime factors, we can take a different approach that we used with dividing polynomials. Looking at the coefficients first, the 6 over 18 is a fraction we can simplify to 1 third. So we have a 1 in the numerator, 3 in the denominator. Then the variables x squared over x and remember these binomial factors we're not including these x's when thinking about these x's these are separate and different factors the x plus 3 compared to an x squared or an x so just looking at x squared over x we can do some canceling there we're left with one x that should go into the numerator now we can think about these binomial factors and x minus 4 will cancel with that x minus 4 we have x plus 3 left over into the numerator so our numerator after we clean it up a little bit we have 1x times x plus 3 so there's the x times x plus 3 with a 3 in the denominator so same sort of simplifying just a different approach where we didn't necessarily break all everything down into all of its prime factors